Okay, what about the new visit? You said some of the original teachers will be going out and the new will be coming in. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? It means that... <laughs> Good question. Uh, the thing is that even, even cannot people mostly cannot imagine, cannot accept that if we would not have those ones who is controlling the solar system, we would, we would not be living here on this planet. This planet and the solar system would be destroyed by asteroids and other things. Those who is controlling, keeping the whole solar system in a harmony, they are now here for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's like it's like a group, certain group of developed people who are here already thousands of years. You know, it's a long task, I tell you. And these people are now going back to rest. And the other groups is coming here. And are these ETs, are they human? They are humans. They are humans. Uh -huh. But ETs, but humans. I see. They are not gods. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Forget it. It's just humans on the different level of development, much higher that we can imagine, but are they, they are people, humans. Okay, are they people that look like you and I and they're here physical in this reality? You're talking about teachers that are avatars who are not visible no, no. in this when, plane. When, when you meet these people, uh, they are, well, more or less looking like we are, but they are higher, different energetic states. But they have two hands, two legs, you know, the head, they love each other, you know, everything like we have, mm. are doing here. Mm. But they are different at the same time. First of all, they have a different mentality, different approach to life, to communications. And you're getting this information from the ancient texts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but are you also getting this information from remote viewers that, because we know that this... Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, did a lot of investigation using yeah. remote viewers. Yes, yeah. um, actually, maybe even before the U.S. I don't know if they did it before China. Doesn't matter. Believe me, it, it, for me, it doesn't matter who is the first. No, Americans, no. Russia, but doesn't what I'm matter. saying is, 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 are these remote viewers? No, no. Helping no. to give you this information. No. no. My personal experience. I was not happy to work with those ones who mm -hmm. use these abilities. Okay. Because we have found that 99 and 9 and 99% that was whether false information or not that interesting for me at all. Mm. I had so many cases, even I say let let's say short cases, when I could just ask a question and to give an answer and immediately to see that this person sees something else but not reality mm -hmm. something else it's this reality that he describes or she describes has nothing to do to us mm -hmm. reality is different and this is the reason why for me uh, this mm, amount of experiences especially those ones ancient texts who have received this knowledge not by remote viewing mm -hmm. they did it but with the help of pyramids with the help of instruments which were uh, working or acting like for us like a telephones or you know tv screen mm -hmm. okay when you can see you can compare you can use your own knowledge and you know at, at the end of the story you have a real you know information i would say scientific information otherwise it's going to be about something well shortly um i was not happy to work with okay. remote viewers. For right. me, it's absolutely not interesting. I see. Okay, so here you are in Russia and you're doing some revolutionary work in many ways, okay? And we are not used to thinking of Russia so much as a place of such freedom of thought. And yet here you are, you are working with the government with very advanced techniques. Um, what can you say about Russia at this time that it is, it must be undergoing such a change in consciousness 
to allow someone as like yourself with your building your pyramids and so on you're influencing this this government to be a totally different kind of a government can you say anything about this what i would say i'm really sorry that within the last hundreds hundreds of years people living in the west have no possibility to touch and to understand a real a Russian spiritual reality. Russians, in the century, they are, they are so spiritual, mm. so unbelievably open-minded people. Mm. So if a long, long time ago we would be connected all together, mm. I'm sure the development of our civilization took quite a different, much more positive way. Mm. This year, on February, I was lucky and I made this historical discovery. I was lucky to find Hyperborea. I'm sorry? I was lucky to find Hyperborea. The Hyperborean people, in all, in all ancient texts, they are called and Hyperborea at the place where gods were living and the place from which they came to Atlantis, they came to Europe, they came to Siberia and they brought a knowledge to India, mm. they brought a knowledge to uh, eastern countries. So they were the first, the first, the key spiritual, you know, stimulators of our planet. And everybody thought that this place now is under the water of the yes. Northern Sea. Okay. I have found it and it's not under the water. And the central place of this civilization the mountain called Meru, the biggest pyramid, probably you have heard about it, Meru, mm -hmm. it still stands. Mm -hmm. this Mount Meru? Meru. Where? Where it is? Mount Meru? In the, yes, Mount Meru. In Tanzania? No. No? No. Okay, this is a different Mount Meru. Where is this? So, if you're interested, I can give you just a very short idea how I found it. All ancient text says the pyramid complexes and all pyramids and temples that were set up before asteroid impact were orientated exactly on the northern pole on mountain Meru. Mm -hmm. What they had to do is just to find a complex like pyramids or pyramid complexes which were constructed according to a former uh, law, or, I mean like a canon. And you can see where they look. Where was the ancient northern pole? Now I can see it here. Come over. Yes. Okay. I, I will show it here too. Ancient text says that Kailas, northern reflector of the Kailas, was looking exactly to the north. So we make a line, it goes Greenland. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need now second one, second complex. The second complex, 15 degrees, Teotihuacan. Okay, we go two lines. Opa, Meru is here. This is Hyperborea. Those whom we know who was defecting the old others, they were living here. The Meru is under the snow, but not under the ice here. Now look then, it's very interesting. This is another complex here in Russia. 
also orientated to male. Mm. Yeah. Now look. Colors. Looking exactly to Mero. Mm. If you put 90 degree here, the pyramid of Atlantis is here. Is here under the water, not so deep is here. This is the map of Haji Ahmed. And Haji Ahmed shows exactly the place where Atlantean pyramid, pyramid was situated. It is here. Three main pyramids of a planet before mm. its uh, uh, Kailas. Now look, Hyperborea. This is the map of Gerhard Mercator. You see? So you found it, but it's not is... under the water. The northern pole was not here. It was here. And right now it's under snow? Yeah, just under the snow. Not under the ice. It's but... on top. So the actually I would say that our spirituality, our Russian spirituality, okay, it's from here. Mm -hmm. So those who was here and then later on bringing spirituality to the other countries, mm -hmm. they came from here. And this is the North Pole, right? The former North Pole. The former. Former. And magnetic pole is almost here. I see. Can you go there? Sure. Yeah? Sure. Did you go there? I will go there. Next ah, year. okay. I will go. You so okay. Here. It is here. Is there going to be evidence when you go there? Yes? Is it going to be buried? Or... No. No? You will see the traces, what we have got left from metal, there. Mm. It will be there. Mm. So, you see this part? Are you able to use satellite photography to examine sure. the area? Sure, sure. So, this is now under the water, right? Uh -huh. But even on the map of Gerhard Mirkater, it's on top. You see, it's uh, 1558. This map was produced, 15, <laughs> published 1558. Uh -huh. On that map, we have this part uh -huh. on top, not under the water. Uh -huh. But see? Mm -hmm. So, this part, northern part of Siberia, was not under the water even 2,000 years ago. It was on top. It was gone under the water not so long ago. Okay. But this, the reason and the problem is that on this map of Gerhard Mirkater, we have three maps. This part of map, look, this part of map. It's an ancient, very old map that was done before flood. Mm. This one is the same area. Ah. It's the same, but after the flood, mm -hmm. displaced 15 degrees mm. because of the asteroid impact. So Gerhard just put together two maps before flood and after flood and put together the same area but not like this like this mm. and there is a, this is the reason why all investigators they were not able to understand what I is see. here oh, okay. why it's like mm. this Interesting. Yeah. but the reason is simple it's just displacement and northern pole is not here it's here well what is going to happen to that area though you know, with so the melting of the snow and the changing of the, the, the melting of the glaciers and, you know, the flooding that is going to result. We talked to Bariska, he talks about, he believes in 2009, starting in 2009 possibly, there is going to be, because of the melting... Bariska, Bariska now, he's a pretty clever guy. He's using the information connected with the so-called four-year cycles. According to four-year cycles and 12-year cycles, each 12-year cycles uh, is uh, constructed of three four-year cycles. And now look, the former 12-year cycles have finished on 2001. Okay? okay? 
what what took place all over the world, you know. Mm. In America, it was terrible moment. You know, it like mm -hmm. 2001, okay? Plus plus four years, 2005, okay? Yeah. Plus four years, 2009, good. And plus four years, 2000. No, 12, 13. Okay. So it means 2009 is connected to four year cycles and you will see some unusual events. But the key moment will start at 2000, oh, actually not 12, 2001 plus 12 years. Mm -hmm. 2013. 12, it's just the beginning when you will see something is going on and 2013 on our planet we will witness terrible hurricanes this cat catastrophe is much stronger than now especially the sun mm -hmm. it will be so active, unbelievably active mm -hmm. affecting the stability of the planets in a solar system mm -hmm. and especially those ones which is behind the sun mm -hmm. so in connection with mechanism, this mechanism of 12 year cycles uh, containing three cycles per four year. Mm -hmm. This is the key moment. Mm -hmm. So, when you want to know when it will happen, use these keys. Because ancient priests, Egyptian priests, and priests of Maya, they always were basing their, um, how to say, what, what they predicted. Yes. They were based on cycles. Sure. So according to the cycle, it starts on 2012, but in active phase, mm -hmm. it will be on 2013. It's sure. will just very active. Is there anything that you are working on that you think that Americans and other people, because we this kind of an interview will go on to the internet, okay? Mm -hmm. And we will um, be giving sort of this information, some of it will be coming out for the first time outside of Russia even. Mm -hmm. And if there is anything around this, in other words, are you building safe places for the people for these events? Are you allowing this to happen because this is the, the way of the world and some people will live, some people will die? How is no, I, I Russia just, thinking about this. We think like this. First of all, we need to investigate. Mm -hmm. Then, then, now, we already sharing this information on the internet. Mm -hmm. I would be very happy to share this knowledge all over the world, mm -hmm. so that people anywhere in America could have it, mm -hmm. read it, mm -hmm. investigate, and use it. Mm -hmm. Practically use it mm -hmm. to prepare their health mm -hmm. for this event. I see. We need to share it. Otherwise. For example, you understand, if the knowledge of installation and this unbelievable technologies will be only in the hands of Chinese, mm -hmm. it's not right. They will be using it according to their own purposes. Uh, I'm not sure it will be just clear and sacred purposes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this knowledge is uh, devoted to all people on this planet. It should be done. Well by a combined group mm -hmm. from Russia, America, Germany, Australia, everywhere uh, from different countries so uh, to start this process we need to share this knowledge mm -hmm. now are you aware um, we have interviewed a man named Dan Beerish do you know who this is? just have heard I see well he is a scientist, uh, supposedly worked with the government in underground base at Area 51. Mm -hmm. He had relationship with uh, E.T. who uh, he helped um, develop supposedly cures for a skin problem, a um, mm -hmm. the developmental problem they're having. Um, he is talking, and we did an interview with him, about the coming days between now and 2012 and beyond. And he is saying that there are stargates, man-made stargates, that are being turned off as of now because of this influx of energy, which sounds a lot like your, what you have investigated there and, and shown us 
-hmm. you know, which you show you show is mainly coming in through the North mm -hmm. Pole. Um, and he is saying that the man-made stargates must be shut down, but the natural stargates will be left alone, and that this influx of energy could be responsible for a drastic, you know, changes in the weather and so on and so forth. So in some ways, what he says parallels what you are saying, but you are not familiar with his work? Well, on the one hand, a little bit. A little. A okay. little bit. But the, on, on the other hand, as you already understood, uh, we now trying to investigate and understand all these processes being here in Russia, having well, our bases here. So what we have here? Mm -hmm. I mean, the results of our investigation, our scientists, our philosophers, everything here. Mm -hmm. So now we are ready, not only share it, we are also ready to put it together mm -hmm. with other investigators. Mm -hmm. This is the first step. I'm going to publish these books I see. in English language. Okay. And again, it's very important, this is scientific approach. Right. Scientific, very, mm -hmm. very helpful. So, tell me one thing. Are you aware of the Illuminati, yeah. as they are called, and also uh, MJ-12, what used to be called MJ-12, but could also be called, you know, PI-40, or who knows what they're going by now? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Okay, so these are power bases that have actually been supposedly in charge of human affairs I, on I, the planet. I do not know whether you will be happy to listen or to hear it from me or sure. not, but well, investigating all this around Illuminati is... I came, I myself, and people I'm working with, we came to a strict conclusion. Mm. The reality is not so uh, optimistic. It's, for us, they are not interesting. Mm -hmm. Not, completely not. They, they were, well, people are talking about them like people, like those who had a knowledges, no knowledges, mm -hmm. very poor ones, mm -hmm. very poor ones. As for Majestic 12, in the uh, Nexus magazine number 6 and number 7, we published the last results of Russian investigation of these cases, showing exactly that the, the whole story was quite different, quite a different. Mm. <laughs> not like it's usually well exposed in the West, quite different. So we made it, we published it, and now we went on. Now we are not more interested in this story. Okay, but do you hear about, because you were talking about the Chinese, yeah. are you hearing about Ben Fulford and what he is saying about the Chinese, uh, the Yakuza and, and the Chinese? that have um, put out a vendetta, so to speak, on the Illuminati and the plans that they have for the planet during this time that we're approaching. Are you aware of all of this? On the one hand, yes. But the, on the other hand, this is the reason why I say, for me, it's, um, it's, it's not so interesting because uh, the reality is different. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's just the stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reality. There's no summary of the reality in the in published in Nexus six and seven. Can uh, you tell us what you concluded, or what your what your Russian colleagues concluded? I mean, the Majestic Twelve. Yeah. False stories, completely false stories from the beginning. Sorry, friends, it's false stories. Well, uh, I would be very happy to find some additional well uh, finances to translate the whole investigation into English. Mm -hmm. Then you would see. It's false case. Okay, so you're not so much worried about the power struggle on no. the planet no. as you are Completely preparing no. for these, for this uh, energetic event that is coming and the pyramids that you're, you're building Completely not. as because a solution. I, I'm sure that what I'm doing now, just sharing information about the pyramid, the information around mm -hmm. it, and what can give the uh, usual American person or German people the possibility practically to improve the health and mm -hmm. prepare yourself, it's much more interesting than yes. all the stories about Illuminati, which actually has nothing to do with reality. Okay. It's, my, it's my pure... Uh, I, I'm sure about this. Okay. Uh, I have visited, I have talked with many people all over the world and in Russia, and I was so astonished 
to see that those who is talking about the knowledge in reality has no this knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's just they think they have. In reality, they have no. And what we have actually just brought here by these books is much more than you can find among these stories. Much more. Okay. One more question, and then we are going to mm. close this um, mm. down unless you have something more for us. But you have this interesting um, miniature it's sort of installation built in your wall here. And you showed us a really fascinating thing that happened at night um, that this person staying with you was able to film something coming out of the crystal, like a light, and going around the room. And the reason I'm asking you about this is because Dan Burrish is doing work with something call, he calls the Lotus, in which he is working with crystals and working with the generating or the finding of what is almost life, a form of, of life building that actually comes through crystals if they are stimulated with a laser. And um, I'm wondering if you know anything about this kind of thing. Yeah, but at the same time, but this very good example. Uh, I already told you that I would prefer something which we can touch, you know. The story is about spirituality, the story is about something that we can only believe, okay? It's okay, but for me it's not enough. I was always trying to find something you know, which we, what we can call the hard evidence. Mm. For me, at least for me, hard evidence, okay? And investigating, again, talking the pyramid constructions, the knowledge embodied in the pyramid, energy sources that were used to make the pyramid uh, like a special instrument. Right. I was trying to find what they have been using, what the construction it was. So. Mm -hmm. We, we have been lucky to find the ancient texts. So, we, I, I just usually, I, I did usually what I did, I just reproduced it, okay? As soon as I have the knowledge, I decided I need to make it and to try to see what this text is talking about. Okay, so you see, I did it just on the wall of my flat. As soon as it was just changing here yes. for better, I said, why not? I just put it here, uh, it's not the whole system, it's not what you see here, it's the, you know, it, it, there are a few layers behind it. Okay, yes. So, I just produced it, and I was really, really astonished when suddenly the system started to act as the living something. Yes. First of all, there were a few cases when in the middle of the night, when everything was dark here in this room, this crystal system started to bring out a light, unbelievable light. And the a person, I, you, I already will show you yes. this guy, this Beck. Beck, he was astonished to see it at night because he never read anything about UFOs, nothing. He knows nothing about spirituality and the, what we are discussing now, I mean, right. okay? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he went out of this room at night and said, Valerie, how should I treat it? Is it okay? It's bad or good? I said, what do you mean? This crystal system started to glow unbelievable light. Mm -hmm. I said, wait, don't be afraid. Just next time, just wake me up. I would also be happy to see it. <laughs> next time at night, he just made a photo on the telephone. Yes. Just telephone camera. Chip. And the last time, at the first day, it's the first day of a full moon. Mm. 20 minutes to 10 in the evening, ball of light came out of these crystals, was flying here, and then again touched the crystal and went inside. And Beck just took again the telephone and made you know, like a film, just, mm -hmm. and I showed it to you. Yes. Do you think we can see that again? I, I will give you it to you. I okay, can send great. it by that email. Would and that you would can be use better it. than what we could capture on so, the phone. Sure, the, the quality of camera is not so good, but I decided, mm -hmm. this is the reason why I put it like here. Yes. So I plan to put the camera here, <laughs> and a okay. big, bigger one here, yes. and computer, it's more than two gigabytes, mm -hmm. uh, terabytes, terabytes Two of okay. disk space here. Yes. Okay. I'm going to film it, yes. especially at the first days of full moon, mm -hmm. just to get this 
you know, mm -hmm. event with a higher quality. Sure. But for me, it's a key moment. First time, practically, we have received a dis like instrument which is radiating a light, emitting a f energetic balls. Mm -hmm. Not like in a, in, a, in a field of belief, it works. Sure. It's quite different. Mm -hmm. This is already a case when we, where or when we can investigate it, at least scientifically. Sure. First of all, to film it, to see the periods, cycles, how, how, how what, what kind of light, how uh, intensive, you know, in the other things. Just what we can do. It's, it's not just spiritual, you know, conversation. It's sure. reality. Okay, so you put, you're building an instrument and you're putting it inside the pyramid, right? Yeah. So okay. Inside what of the pyramid, we are going are to doing? set up 12 such energy sure. services. But 12. you cannot tell us, will you tell us what is behind, what is the mechanism that you are, have behind the wall? Uh, I would is prefer, this a secret? I, I would prefer now, at this uh -huh. moment, just to, to have it, because as soon as we are investigating this, okay, yes. we need to know, well, deeply, how it works. I'm sure that what was described and stands behind the bird phoenix, you know, in ancient Egypt, yes. or Benno, this energetic influence stimulated consciousness mm -hmm. and the life is very closely connected to such a system i'm sure now i'm sure about it yes but first of all i would prefer <laughs> investigate it I, I can tell you simply i did it my main first reason was here i have an earthquake right under this building ah. and energy in this room was not good for me. Mm. I, I, feel, I felt exhausted. Next 30 minutes, when I came here, sat here for the first, in 20 minutes I, I felt myself energetically exhausted. I see. So that was not positive. Mm -hmm. And my main idea was, when I came to understanding of the system, I, okay. I said to myself, why not to do it? Maybe it will <laughs> change the energy here yes. and it will be much better for me to work. Mm -hmm next day energy here was changed mm. back back was very painful he lost his pain yes. he had a serious problems with the kidneys no problems yes. second day now already four months after this it's here already four months no any problems with pain with livers with uh, mm -hmm. kidneys nothing okay. he's happy me very too good. Okay. I'm very happy. Well, this is this is this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we we've used enough of your time, and yeah. we are very grateful I for all of this. Okay. When you were talking about the installation, I had one or two questions about that. It felt as if there was more that you could have said about where it where it is, how it works, and how it was discovered. Good questions. Okay. Well, where it is, what we have here. Now I would like to point out, in our dimension, there are few physical um, devices. It's a huge devices. They are under the ground. Mm -hmm. And these physical devices are generating, in a certain moment, when a meteorite carrying a dangerous bacteria appears somewhere over the planet, the system starts to prepare. Usually it starts approximately half an hour before. At this moment, strange vibration of the Earth, like, like a small or tiny earthquake starts, strange sounds from under the ground, and then people describe, like, and I, I gave this description in the Nexus magazine, by the way, translated into English, they have been described like kind of uh, things, metallic uh, lead, leads were opened in the ground, and I'm calling this terminators. It's a big light balls. Some of them were approximately 50 to 60 meters in diameter. Were flying out from the ground. These were observed. Yes, yeah. that's the reason. Yeah. Local indigenous people. They all were spoken. Yeah. Hundreds of them. They have seen hundreds, hundreds of them. Mm. 
but most part of them were generated not in our dimension, in parallel dimension. They are coming here from parallel dimension. And how do you reach this conclusion? Because of the... it's easy. It's easy. There are places where people described, they witness vibration of the earth, opens the things like this, movement, strange sounds, you know, like earthquakes, like a real mechanism is working, okay? Mm -hmm. The other places, nothing like this, just from the ground, just a light, like a beam of light, appear, and, you know, like a, like a fiery tail, something appear here. It's not generated in the earth. It's appear from something, like from parallel dimensions. You know, like UFO goes here, or disappear. Yes. It stands here, and then, yes. and nothing. The same thing. Okay, I see. Just think. Here. Okay. Come on, this parallel dimension. Hmm. There would have to be a number of these installations all over the planet in order to cover the Earth from such impacts from every direction. Right. There would have to be, right. I mean, I'm just trying to kind of figure out in my, in my right. mind, there'd right. have to be several dozen. So, what I can, uh, I can tell you about this now. There were some of them in Australia. Hmm. They were, I, I, I would say they were already used. They do not work anymore. But you can find something there. Some already used are in China. Most part of active are in two places. In Siberia and near Easter Island. Mm. Under the water. There. But those ones it's under the water. In Siberia, it's, we have it here on top mm. of the Earth. North, Most. Are there any in North America as well? No, not. They were long, long ago. They were now not. Mm. So this is a this is an ancient technology to protect the planet. Uh, I wouldn't say ancient. I would say the this installation started to construct it to you know to build maybe seventeen, eighteen thousand years ago. But during this thousand years ago, this installation were developed, continuously developed, and. Uh, those who lived on Mars and Maldives before, they started to do it. Mm. But there were other people, I would say visitors, who continued to develop it. And I would say, well, it's just the beginning of a story. Uh, to show it to you how it's amazing, we need much more time. Yes. And I need, I need better English. I have no enough, well, words for this. I would prefer to describe everything in the book, mm -hmm. to translate it into English, Understood. where or when you can afterwards to read it carefully, to mm -hmm. see. It's an amazing story. The whole story around Tunguska case is mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. And what I'm sure that these terminators, these light bulbs, they were flying all over. You can see them even over America. Mm. Sure, even now, if kind of... Uh, meteorite is flying in direction over America and it is about to hit the ground over America you will see but people mostly see it or they think this is UFO but it's not UFO mm -hmm. it's Terminator flying and usually if it is Terminator is always connected with a strange offer or with a kind of explosion first you see this ball then maybe three four minutes strange explosion and light you know like enlightenment the sky is lightning mm -hmm. so if it's like ball and then three four minutes lightning and you know like explosion you can be sure hundred percent terminator mm -hmm. because the reason why another thing people think that if terminator just hit the meteorite so the pieces the most part of the pieces, I mean, debris of this mm -hmm. meteorite should be here, mm -hmm. on planet Earth. On one hand, it's a reasonable question. On the other hand, it's not like this. If, like in Tunguska case, hundreds of terminators hit this meteorite and just 
boil, boiled out, you know, they just burned. They just... Um, Incinerate, you mean? Yes, the they just turned the whole substance mm -hmm. into, you know, into fire. Mm -hmm. And then no having any living biological organism stayed alive, mm -hmm. this debris you can find on planet Earth. Like, after Tunguska case, we had a lot of such materials. But most part, 97% of these materials always is brought into other dimension. So okay. they just hit. They, when the Terminator is exploded, it made a combustion, deformation of the space and time. It made like kind of a hole, okay? And meteorite exactly flies out, whoop, and somewhere else. But not on the planet. Earth. I see. Okay. This is this is the key moment. This is the reason why in the book I'm giving a very interesting description when witnesses at seven o'clock fifteen minutes past seven in the morning, in the morning, when the sun was over their heads, they said when they heard the explosion, strange, strong, first thing that took place, they said, we have been hanging in the starry skies. No sun, no earth, just space and stars around. And they described, they said, open, uh, skies was opened. Mm. So it means they just, this explosion transformed space and time and they saw them, so, standing in the universe. Next moment, hop, Everything was closed, and then strange explosion. Okay. No traces. But you are saying the Chinese have a tech, have discovered. They have, they have found some of the, the some devices. Behind this. Yes, which were so. Actually, this is the system. Okay, it's a kind of a tube goes down deeply. Mm -hmm. They found this tube and something that was inside. Mm -hmm. They found it. How do you know? Uh, he says this... Secret service is working. You have secret service... Okay, fine. It's, they're working. They found it. Inside information. Mm -hmm. 